In this video, I'll be explaining why the world needs Bitcoin. Our current financial system is completely distraught and quite frankly, it's on the verge of collapse. And we live in a world that is very hungry for power and control. And one of the main ways to control people is to control the money supply. So I'm really going to be explaining and taking a deep dive into when we do shift into a Bitcoin 100% standard and we use Bitcoin as the main unit of account, as the main currency here on the entire planet, all of these problems will literally be alleviated. This is probably my most important video to date, so please stick with me until the very end. And if you are new to Crypto Empire, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like this video, and make sure you have all bell notifications turned on so you're notified when I do make a new video. And more importantly, before you do any of that, all I do ask is that you share this with your friends and family. Because the more people that really understand this information and comprehend it fully, the quicker we can make the adoption curve go for Bitcoin and the quicker we can solve all of these problems for humanity's sake. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to start off this video, let's get into what Bitcoin actually is. Because I have a lot of conversations with normal everyday people, whether it's my colleagues, my friends, my family, whoever, a lot of them really don't understand what Bitcoin is whatsoever. And we can see this with the price. The price currently dropped from about $65,000 back to around $30,000. And if people really understood the fundamental value behind Bitcoin, I guarantee you they wouldn't be selling. So basically, Bitcoin is math. And math has been around for thousands of years. So I trust math. And with that being said, our current financial system isn't necessarily math. Right, it can be manipulated, it can be controlled to suit a current narrative. So that is why Bitcoin automatically has a leg up on fiat money. And to make things even more simpler to understand, put it in layman's terms, Bitcoin has a finite supply. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoins minted in circulation. And currently at this moment in time, there is 18.7 million Bitcoin in circulation. So Bitcoin is a scarce asset. Think of it like gold. Gold is also a scarce asset. The way to bring more gold into the world is to dig into the earth, get into the crust, and find these little gold nuggets. And with Bitcoin, it's a little bit different because it uses the internet and it uses cryptographic technology where you mine Bitcoin with a computer. And basically, only a finite amount of Bitcoin can be mined per day. Currently, only 900 Bitcoin are minted, generated per day. That is the current block reward. And every four years, Bitcoin decreases. It halves its block reward. So this is a big event in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency community. The halving usually sparks a bull market in the crypto markets. But basically, in 2024, this 900 Bitcoin reward per day is going to drop to 450. And every four years, it will half. So this isn't too important when it comes to Bitcoin as the power of the world economy, as the main source of legal tender in the world. But it's pretty important that you know this information, that Bitcoin has a finite supply. So you might be wondering, if there's only 21 million Bitcoin and there's 7 to 8 million people on planet Earth, how could Bitcoin ever be used as a unit of account? Well, that's a very good question. I'm glad that you did bring that up. So Bitcoin can be broken up into a smaller unit of account. One Bitcoin is made up of 100 million smaller units of account, and these are called Satoshis. So currently one Satoshi is trading at $0.003456. One Satoshi is a fraction of a penny. And I do believe in my lifetime that one Satoshi will equal at least $1, definitely even more. And I'm going to be explaining why right now. Basically, the current financial system is on its dying last legs. It's not going to end well. And the U.S. dollar, there's a lot of talks about the dollar becoming digital, like central bank digital currencies. If you didn't notice, it's already digital. We have our phones, we have our bank account on our phone, and we tap the phone on some kind of 
you know, cash register and it deducts the money and we get our goods or service in return. But the problem with this is that the majority of the people on planet Earth don't have access to a bank account. Nowadays, they do have access to a mobile phone, but you know, there's no banks in the rural parts of Africa or South America or Asia, right? These people that live, you know, quite frankly, in the jungle, in the dirt, they don't have a bank, they don't have a local branch to go and go to, to set up an account. So the majority of the world is currently unbanked. And the fact that Bitcoin can be broken down into 100 million Satoshis means that there is enough Satoshis to power the world economy and to have 7 to 8 billion people utilizing it as their form of legal tender. Basically, Bitcoin will become the one world currency. You know, the XRP army out there wants XRP to become that, but you guys need a reality check, okay? So, you might be thinking, okay, Connor, like, how could I ever use a Satoshi in my everyday life? How would that work? Well, it's very simple. Right now, you pay everything with dollars, right? You pay your mortgage, you pay your car payment, you pay your insurance, you pay for groceries, you pay for gas. Everyday living expenses are all paid with dollars or whatever fiat currency you use wherever you are in the world. So all you would do is you would just use Satoshis instead of dollars. So let's say, I'll give an arbitrary example. Let's say you pay $3,000 a month right now for your mortgage to finance your house. So if you're paying $3,000 a month, that means you're paying about 8,678,962 Satoshis. When a Satoshi increases in value against the dollar, which it will be because of hyperinflation, we're going to be getting into that in just one second, this number is going to decrease astronomically, right? You're not going to be paying millions of Satoshis for your mortgage for a $3,000 monthly mortgage payment. You're probably going to be paying 3,000 Satoshis, right? Because one Satoshi will equal $1 in my lifetime. And if you're a young guy or a young girl like myself, well, then it's probably going to happen in your lifetime as well. So that's how it works. It's very simple. All we do is we just need to change our way of thinking. We need to, to switch off the programming that we've grown up with where, you know, dollars are everything, dollars the, the end all be all. All we have to do is start to look at things in a different light. And once people start using it and really understand how it works, it's it's going to catch on like wildfire. Me as a cryptocurrency trader, I already price everything in Satoshis because I trade altcoins, right? I trade all the other cryptocurrency coins to make more Bitcoin. I'll give you an example. If we look at Polkadot, Polkadot right now is 44,210 Satoshis, also $15.27. So if we look at Polkadot in terms of Satoshis, 44,000 220 um, that comes out to fifteen dollars and 29 cents right that's the current exchange rate so if you're already into crypto you most likely already are used to pricing everything in satoshis so it's not too complicated but if you're newer and you're just getting into crypto one thing I hear a lot when I'm talking to my colleagues my friends and family is they bring up the word shares because they're used to the traditional stock market but with cryptocurrency and with Bitcoin, shares don't exist. Okay, so get that word out of your vocabulary. Satoshis exist, okay, in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Think of Satoshis. You want to acquire as many Satoshis as possible. And currently, 1 million Satoshis equals $345, as we can see right here. So if you want to become a millionaire in the future, just spend $345, get yourself 1 million Satoshis and never sell it. And that's another thing we really need to understand is that Bitcoin is not a trade. You should not buy Bitcoin and plan to sell it at a higher price. Why, you may ask? Well, let's take a little road trip back down history lane. And let's look at a tweet from 2011. So this dude, Greg, tweeted, I wish I had kept my 1,700 BTC at six cents instead of selling them at 30 cents. Now they're at eight dollars. This is a real tweet. You can go to Greg's Twitter profile. I'm not picking on Greg here. I'm simply using him as an example because a lot of people want to buy Bitcoin and sell it for more US dollars in the future. And that's fine. I'm not saying you can't trade it, but you need to have a stash. You need to have Bitcoin that you're never going to sell. All right. I personally lost mine in a boating accident, which is unfortunate. 
but you need to have a stack that you're never going to sell. So with that being said, don't be like Greg. You need Bitcoin for the future. And the reason why you do need that is because of the way things are going with our current money supply. This right here is a data chart from the St. Louis Federal Reserve. This is straight from the Fed. If you didn't already know, the Federal Reserve is the governing body of the U.S. dollar. And the fact is that it has nothing to do with the U.S. government. It is a privately owned corporation that sits on U.S. soil. However, where the Federal Reserve banks are, they are essentially international territory. You are not in the United States, technically, when you are in the Federal Reserve. So that kind of sketches me out. I don't know about you. Leave a comment down below if that also makes you a little bit uneasy. So what we're looking at here is the current money supply. Right here we can see in 2020, it went vertical. They are printing money out of thin air, the Fed. So you might be thinking right now, Connor, why is it a problem that so much money is being printed? It's still fine. I go to the grocery store and you know I might be paying a little bit more for groceries, but it's not that noticeable. And I, I might be paying a little bit more to fill up my gas tank, but you know it's really not that bad. It has a lagging effect, okay? Inflation has a lagging effect and we are in the very early stages of it at this moment in time. It only started in 2020. And in 2020 alone, 22% of all US dollars were printed. Okay, over one fifth of all the money in circulation was printed last year alone. This is because of all the stimulus, the trillion dollar packages, nine trillion dollars, nine trillion, okay, not billion, trillion. That is an insane amount of money. And basically, the reason why this is a corrupt system is because the money gets printed by the Fed and it has a top down effect. And this is known as the Cantillion effect. Let me explain right now what the Cantillion effect is. When new money is added to the economy, it will naturally raise the price of goods and assets. However, not all prices will rise by the same amount or at the same time. That's very important. The Cantillion effect asserts that the first recipient of the new supply of money has an arbitrage opportunity of being able to spend money before prices have increased, right? Like I said, it's a top-down effect. New money gets printed. It ends up in the hands of the people at the top and it hasn't circulated down yet. This is partially due to the fact that new fiat money is created at almost zero cost and given to specific parties, usually banks. These banks have an opportunity to spend this money on goods and assets whose price has not yet reflected the increase in the money supply. They have that arbitrage opportunity. New money is created out of thin air, and now they can go and buy assets such as a house, such as a car, etc with this new money and the prices are still the same as before this new before the trillions of dollars were created in thin air so it gives the people at the top a very significant advantage over the people at the bottom like you and i okay and i'm not trying to play the victim mentality here this is just reality this is how it is and it's very important that you understand it banks can thus buy goods at a discounted rate as the new money flows from central banks to private banks to investors to ordinary citizens prices gradually begin to reflect the increase in the money supply. By the time ordinary citizens experience the increased money supply, they will be buying goods at higher prices. Thus, the flow of new money through the economy is beneficial to parties that receive the funds first and less beneficial to those that receive it later on. These individuals and institutions closest to the central bank, banks and asset owners are granted financial advantages at the cost of those least connected to the financial system. This is the Cantillion effect. What this means is that this $9 trillion was printed out of thin air and it was given to specific parties. These specific parties had the opportunity to go and buy whatever they did want with this newly created money at a discounted rate because now we're starting to feel the, the effects of inflation. It's starting to kick in and it's going to go parabolic in the coming years, okay? The U.S. dollar is going to collapse. There's no debate about that. So please prepare ahead of time. Get yourself some Bitcoin. Like I said, Bitcoin is not a trade. You should never sell that BTC. Very important. Don't be like Greg. Okay. So moving on, if we're looking at where we are in terms of the adoption cycle for Bitcoin, it's estimated that only about 2.5% of the world's population has adopted Bitcoin. 
So we have a long way to go, which is, again, the reason why I'm making this video, and I do believe it's one of my most important videos to date. We need to get the word out. We need to make people understand why Bitcoin is needed in the world. The majority of people on planet Earth don't have access to a bank account, but they do have the mobile phone. Okay, this is why we have countries like El Salvador making Bitcoin legal tender, right? You can use Bitcoin to pay for everyday goods and services. This is the first domino to fall. Watch. By the end of 2021, dozens of countries on this planet will be accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. Yes, I do believe it will start to happen very quickly. The first domino is already falling. There are talks of other South American nations already wanting to implement Bitcoin as legal tender. Prepare now. Prepare ahead of time. It is going to sweep like wildfire and you don't want to be left behind. So it's unfortunate one place in the world that's really experiencing an economic collapse is Lebanon. Lebanon experienced extreme hyperinflation. Their money literally went to zero and their current nation is distraught. It's complete crisis. This is an article from you know, a local Wisconsin uh, news place. But basically they're saying this, the crisis which began in late 2019 is rooted in decades of corruption and mismanagement by a post-Civil War political class that has accumulated debt and done little to encourage local industries, forcing the country to rely on imports for almost everything. Sound familiar? The Lebanese pound has nosedived, banks have clamped down on withdrawals and transfers, and hyperinflation has flared. The liquidity crunch is crippling the government's ability to provide fuel, electricity, and basic services. A shortage of dollars is gutting imports of medical supplies and energy. So Lebanon got completely destroyed by this financial collapse by hyperinflation. And this is what it does, right? Normal everyday people um, lose everything. They lose completely everything. We can read right here from a Lebanese citizen. My life was already difficult and now the gasoline crisis only made things worse. To survive, he works a second job at a Beirut grocery store and his monthly income in Lebanese pounds has lost 95% of its purchasing power. Imagine going to work every single day and your money loses 95% of its value. How pissed would you be? Leave a comment down below. Right here is a chart of Bitcoin versus the Lebanese pound. This is a 10 year chart. So 10 years ago, we were up here and we have lost about you know 99% of value with, um, with Bitcoin versus the Lebanese pound. If we look at a one year chart, you know, we've lost significant value. So it's really unfortunate to see this. My thoughts and my prayers go out to the people in Lebanon. <laughs> seriously messed up what hyperinflation does we've seen it in places like venezuela and you know if, if things don't change it will come to the western world which is again why i'm making this video share this with your friends and family wake them up to the fact that this is creeping on their doorstep and unless you do have an asset like bitcoin that is already being adopted as legal tender the shift to a bitcoin standard has started you do not want to be left behind and definitely Consider getting yourself some Bitcoin. This channel is not financial advice. I'm not going to tell you what to buy or sell. You need to do your own research. But I strongly encourage you to really look into this. Because one thing that I need to also mention is that during a financial collapse like we're seeing in Lebanon, it's important to understand that all of the assets still exist. All of the cars still exist. All of the factories still exist. All of the houses, all of the properties, they still exist. They still hold value. An asset will always hold value. It doesn't matter if it's priced in dollars or it's priced in Bitcoin Satoshis. Value is value. You can't change value. So all that happens during a financial collapse, a crisis, is the ownership of these assets changes. It goes from the people that, can, that are using or already hold other things that hold value and they can exchange that for the different assets. Bitcoin holds value and it's only going to be increasing in value as time goes on. So it's very important that you know we understand this fact and we, uh, we wrap our head around it so that we can be prepared for whatever does happen in the future. 
And you might be saying, Connor, Bitcoin will never be used as the unit of account in the United States of America. The U.S. dollar is the global reserve currency, and that's never going to change. You'd be surprised. You would be very surprised the power that the people have. If we demand something and we refuse to give up, we can accomplish anything. I'm going to leave it at that.